What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G Myers World Podcast. Today we're going to be talking divisional 2021. Uh, we had the Rams and the Packers and the Ravens and the Bills. Many of you guys that watched it already know exactly what was going on with it. We're going to go ahead and break it down uh, based on what I saw and what we can look for in the next coming weeks uh, leading up to the Super Bowl. Um, the Rams and the Packers, 32 to 18. Aaron Rodgers was cooking. We all know that Aaron Donald was playing through that rib cartilage. Um, you know, it, it was really, really bad stuff going on. And then the Ravens and the Bills, the way that, that ended, it was just really disgusting Like to see it happen because I felt so bad uh, for Lamar Jackson. Cause you can see he puts everything into it. Um, but obviously, uh, these protocols are there to protect these athletes. Um, unlike what they were doing earlier when we used to really enjoy football when dudes was getting them. Yo, bro, dudes were getting their blocks knocked off. But we're going to talk about the Rams first. Okay, so Jared Goff. Now, many of us already knew, right? We weren't expecting the offense of the Rams to really do anything. Uh, I thought that if they scored about, you know, 14 points, they would win the game probably because defensively they would be able to hold Aaron Rodgers uh, or keep him under control. Jared Goff, 21 of 27, 174 yards, one touchdown. You, looking at that, you don't get to really see that they contained him pretty well. I know, like, you don't see the interceptions, but he did a lot of plays where it's like, all right, what are you doing? Um, you know, they were well prepared for whatever he was going to do. Keep in mind, he had that injury with, to his thumb. So again, it was just really, really bad for the Rams. They didn't really have that many options. Cam Akers came out of nowhere, you know, and you know, he had that rushing touchdown where he went crazy, reached for the touchdown, got the two point conversion. There were a lot of things that were going on where it seemed later on in the game that they would come back and try to compete. But it, they were over, they, they outmatched. I would just say outmatched. I was going to say overmatch, but they were outmatched. Okay, they, they didn't have enough to compete with this Packers team right now. The Packers are a well, like they're a well-oiled machine right now. And Jalen Ramsey was getting straight cooked by Devontae Adams. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Based on everything that I saw, I never really thought that Devontae Adams was all that everybody was hyping, hyping him up to be this year. I know he's a great receiver. And I'm not saying good, great. He's a great receiver. But he's he looks like he's on another level right now. If you guys are looking at it and seeing exactly what's going on, he looks like he's on a whole nother level. So with, with that kind of stuff that's going on, I know he only had nine receptions for 66 yards, but when he routed dudes, he routed dudes, right? So let's talk about Aaron Rodgers, 296 yards, two touchdowns. He had that one rushing one, right? Yeah, because he faked everybody out. He even faked me out. I thought he threw the ball. Like, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm trying to jump through my screen to get it. I was like, oh, it's a fake. All right, cool. Aaron Jones went out there and balled out 99 yards for, on 14 carries, one touchdown, 7.1 average. Aaron Donald was seen visibly crying on the sideline. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You know, like how you make fun of a lot of people? You don't want to make fun of him. Like him crying, just leave him by himself. Like, all right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Grown men cry. You know, it's just really, really dangerous because what happens is they put so much into it. Um, you know, like I said, the reason that I point that out is because there were so many Aaron's, but he unfortunately was the Aaron that didn't get anything done, bro. Like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, and Aaron Donald. And he's a dominant player. He's a very, very good uh, defensive player, but you can't do it by yourself. Like, you don't play offense. Like, maybe put him in that fullback. Like, I don't know what to do. But when you got Aaron Jones rushing for almost 100 yards, Alan Lazard dropped a huge pass, and I was raging, and then he came back, you know, on a nice move and got one for six. Uh, obviously, Devontae Adams, we know what he is. Uh, Tanyan came in, Valdez Scantlin didn't really do much, but they have so many players that can do things. And that's what makes them so dangerous. And then with the way that Aaron Rodgers is out there dealing, I, I don't know how much you can really, you know, what, what are you gonna be able to do about this? Like, even if they go, like, I know the Buccaneers beat them pretty heavily. So let's say the Buccaneers beat the Saints. I don't think they're gonna beat them right now in the playoffs. I, I, I really don't, I just don't think so. I really honestly just don't think so. But. That's just my opinion. I think that I think the Packers are going to the Super Bowl the way that they're playing. If they're able to do that, and Aaron Rodgers can do what he does the way he did it successfully, um, you know, for that divisional game, I think he's all set. Now the later game was really, really sad. All right, I spoke to you guys about Lamar Jackson. Um, he had a, he had one really bad interception uh, that went for six. Now that pick six, I believe, changed the entire game. After that pick six, I tweeted out immediately at G Myers World. Congratulations to the Bills on going to the championship game because that just changed the game. But up until that point, you know, that was going to be like a 10-10 possible game. Like it was going to still be a nip-tuck game. Uh, that is just certain turnovers that you just can't have. And that's ultimately what happened in that play. I did like what I saw from Huntley. I think that, that that young man will be able to, you know, put in some work either there or on another team. I think he's better than RG3. Uh, honestly speaking, um, he did make some really ridiculous throws, but I think his movement and the way that 
you know, the Ravens offense is geared to play, that he can come in and play, uh, come, you know, coming into next year. I, I liked what I saw. Um, their run game was non-existent. They had, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of penalties. Um, they, they weren't able to really do much against Josh Allen when it was time, you know, against third down. Like, Stephon Diggs is a dog. He was out there. We're going to get to that in a second. But we know what Lamar Jackson poses. And they were sacking him left and right. That's what scared me about the situation. I thought he was way too fast to be sacked. But he what yo, dude, they had the perfect defense. They actually played him better than the Titans did last year when he lost to the Titans. Uh, to be honest, so I got I got listen, I'm not gonna go over here and try to make excuses. Um, the way that it worked out, I just think the Bills played, they just outplayed the, the Ravens. That's pretty much what it was. And then why do you have Des Bryant out there? And he's trying to act like he got a flag. Like Des Bryant hasn't been good since he last played. Like, well, he wasn't good for his last years in the Cowboys, and then now he's coming out there and he's he act like he got a flag. Like, bro, go sit down, dude. I don't know. See, that's the kind of thing that's crazy, because they, the the Ravens are trying. Like, what are you doing? Why do you have him out there on the field? Like, it's a lot of things going on. Like, nobody is scared. Even the commentator was like, bro, you couldn't beat anybody deep when you were healthy. You, you know, like the guy that was playing D on him was just like, all right, whatever. He just like backed off, just looking at him like, all right, what you gonna do? It was really sad to see it happen, but it gave me a nice laugh. But Josh Allen, I told you guys, I look, this guy is very, very special. He throws the ball on the run like, I, you know, like how Patrick Mahomes could do it. Like. He, he's just, he just knows how to get the ball where it's supposed to go, and it gets there so fast because he has such a strong arm. This dude, is he's elite. And people are going to, like I, I told you guys since the beginning of this year, I've liked him even before when he was struggling because he has everything that's needed to be able to be that quarterback. This this man is dangerous. Josh Allen is dangerous. So we got to see what happens with the Browns and the, and the Chiefs. Like, dudes think it's sweet. It ain't sweet out here, dude. We don't know what's going to go on. So obviously, their run game is non-existent. Singletary, seven carries, 25 yards. We're not worried about that. But you got to stop Stephon Diggs. You can't give Stephon Diggs 106 yards. You, you can't do that. And then defensively, you can't give them a pick six for 101 yards. Because this, this team is gritty. They fight through it. They do what they need to do to win. And that's the problem. Because offensively, they can they can put up a lot of points. We've seen them put up a lot of points. But if you give them a turnover that they take for six or some kind of craziness, because their defense is pretty good as well, that it's a nightmare. So I'm telling you right now, I am very, very excited to see who plays in the championship game for the AFC because like, I, I'm scared of Josh Allen right now if I'm, if I'm anybody in the AFC. Because you just don't know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see you guys very, very soon after the new championship games. Check it out. Tom Brady first, Drew Brees. It's gonna be pretty exciting. I'm gonna see you guys soon. Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, one love, y'all.